There's a ton of choices on the used GPU market for gamers on a budget, but two cards in particular stand out. From Team Green comes 2016's GeForce GTX 1060 6GB, formerly the most popular gaming GPU in the world. From Team Red, it's the Radeon RX 580 8GB, the second revision of Polaris that found wild commercial success with Ethereum miners. Either can be had for under 100 US dollars or British pounds in 2023, so which, if either, should you buy? The GTX 1060 and RX 580 tick a lot of boxes. They're both attractive options at their current price points, both have more VRAM than most brand new options under $150, and both are compatible with almost every game currently available. I've reviewed both of these graphics cards in recent weeks, and if you haven't seen those videos yet, they're linked below. However, rather than simply looking at those cards on their own, in this video I'm comparing them side by side. The cards being tested are the 6GB 1060SC from EVGA RIP, and the 8GB RX 580 2304 SP from ASUS. Both the 1060 and 580 have lower core count models available, so these numbers won't align with those from the 3GB 1060s or the 2048 SP version of the 580. The test platform is my moderately priced test rig, as detailed on screen now. Without any further time wasting, let's compare bench. The performance difference in The Last of Us is pretty small. At 1080p, both cards can average in the low to mid 30s without using upscaling, and this is about as good an experience as you can expect in this title without spending a lot more money. A win is a win, however, and the 580 scores about 10% higher than the 1060. Moreover, thanks to its higher VRAM capacity, I was able to tweak the settings to get higher quality textures without sacrificing performance. The gap opens up a bit in Jedi Survivor. While the GTX 1060 can get close to a 30fps average, the 1% lows are pretty terrible, and you'd probably want to add some FSR upscaling just to get a more consistent frame rate. The RX 580, meanwhile, is a little more performant, but a lot more consistent. Averages gain 20%, but lows are more than 50% higher. Resident Evil 4 once more sees the 580 leading by almost 20%, though it's not quite as dire a scenario as in Jedi Survivor. The 1% lows are much higher, and you could still get a reasonably smooth experience at balanced without resorting to using FSR, though of course that is a perfectly good option. Like with The Last of Us, there's room for the 8GB card to increase textures slightly higher. I was quite conservative with the 1060, and it could probably do just fine with textures at 2GB, but the 580 can comfortably go up to 3. I'm going to call Forza Horizon 5 a tie. Yes, there's a 1.9 FPS advantage to the RX 580, but that's not really going to be perceptible, and the minimums are pretty much identical. I've seen 6GB cars cause texture issues in Forza in the past, so you probably have a little more room to play with settings on the 580, but most textures fly by at high speed, so I wouldn't worry about it too much myself. If you thought it was all going to go the Radeon's favour, here's a bit of a shocker. The GeForce scores a massive victory in Halo Infinite, to the point where I'd call the 580 unplayable without dropping resolution. The 1060's 66fps average in large scale maps is almost 50% higher than the 580's. I even went back and retested the 580 with Nimei's drivers, to no avail. I'm not entirely surprised. I've observed in the past that this title disproportionately favours some architectures over others. Both cards perform about the same in a Plague Tale Requiem, averaging in the middle 30s and with lows slightly below the 30 mark. Yes, it's technically a slight win for the 580, but not really a perceptible one. The game appears to be using less than 3 gigs of VRAM at these settings, but neither card really has the horsepower to push settings up much higher. The 
The win is a much clearer one for the 580 in God of War. It scores a 10% higher average at 1080 original and manages to do so with the textures turned up to ultra. This quality upgrade doesn't come for free by the way, there's a small drop in performance from doing this, so while you technically could turn up textures on the 1060 as well, it would drop frame rates even further. Another small win for the 580 in Spider-Man Remastered, but once more, it's not one to really write home about. Both cards average above 60 FPS and both suffer spikes into the 30s while swinging along Broadway at high speed. Uncharted 4 sees results similar to those in God of War. At 1080 medium, there's a 10% gap between the Nvidia and AMD in the Radeon's favour, as you might have come to expect by now. Unfortunately, the 1060 does drop below the 60fps average, and while that can be recovered with some FSR, I'll understand if that's not your cup of tea. At risk of sounding like a stuck record, the RX 580 wins by about 10% in Uncharted 4. The RX 580 wins by about 10% in Cyberpunk 2077. Both cards have just enough performance for a fairly stable 30fps at 1080 medium, but the 580 is a little less likely to drop below 30. The remastered Witcher 3 still performs pretty well on this generation of hardware, though it's also pretty demanding on CPUs. A reasonably smooth 60fps average is possible on both cards, though you'll need a pretty decent CPU to enjoy it, at least in DX12. Also, the RX 580 had a bit of a weird visual bug at these settings that caused strange black spots on the ground. Pushing up to ultra resolves this, but that's a pretty expensive solution, performance-wise, so be prepared to mess with settings a bit to get rid of it. The performance difference in Fortnite at medium isn't completely meaningless. I know sweaty hardcore types prefer to play in performance mode or in DX12 at low settings with epic view distance, but if you're hoping to strike a balance of image quality and performance, both the RX 580 and GTX 1060 can do a reasonable job. At 1080 medium, the game looks decent and the 580 pulls ahead by 10 FPS on average and 20 FPS 1% lows. You might have room to turn some settings up to high on the 580, whereas doing so on the 1060 will almost certainly cause drops below 60 FPS. Neither card can handle Lumen or Nanite, however. Radeon's revenge for the massive loss in Halo Infinite comes in Warzone 2. The tables are completely turned as the 580 scores 87 FPS at 1080 basic, while the 1060 only manages 50. 1060 owners will be better off applying some FSR, but if you're buying a budget card specifically for this game, you shouldn't even think about the 1060. The average of averages for these 13 tested games will surprise absolutely no one. The GTX 1060 scores 54 FPS overall, whereas the RX 580 manages 59.5, almost exactly 10% higher. On performance alone, the 580 is the clear winner, with the exception of anyone looking to play Halo Infinite but in that case you should put your money towards an RX 5500XT instead, which outperforms both of these cards across the board, but which will cost a little more. It's worth noting that the cost of the 580's higher performance comes in the form of higher power draw. The 1060 achieves its 54 average FPS with just 85 to 105 watts of power, whereas the RX 580 at stock drains 130 to 145 watts. I was able to undervolt my particular 580 by 130 millivolts, which brings it down to 105 to 115 watts without sacrificing performance, though your mileage may vary. 
This can go a long way to making the AMD card more palatable at a time where much of the world is enduring higher energy costs. The final word then? Well, I've created a bit of a straw man scenario here. I've given you two GPUs to choose from and they are probably the best available at their current price points. And of those two, the RX 580 is the winner by a fairly small margin. However, as always, the answer is more complicated than that. If you shop around, there are incredible GPUs easily available for less than $150. A trip to AliExpress should turn up an RX 5600 XT, 5700 or 5700 XT within that price range, and if you're lucky, you might even find similar prices on your local used market. Hell, I just picked up an RTX 2060 6GB for £125, and that or any other of these cards will trounce the 1060 and 580 for performance, efficiency or both. Yes, they're more expensive, but they should enjoy driver support for longer, and should remain competitive as new games get more and more demanding. You know your own limits. If saving up the extra cash for a better GPU is going to take too long, or you simply can't justify the extra expense, or prices just aren't as good in your area, then by all means, you can still get either one of these great gaming GPUs for less than the cost of a copy of Starfield Premium Edition. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.